Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for August 7th, 2013. On today's show, a 3D image is created through a single lens, hydrogels are controlled and moved with light, a new center aims to advance freeform optics, and the Mars rover Curiosity marks one year on the red planet. A new technique called light field moment imaging uses mathematical processing to create a 3D movie of any scene using just two frames from a stationary camera or microscope. The effect is the equivalent of a person seeing a stereo image with one eye closed. What happens is the technology essentially computes how the image would look if it were taken from a different angle. To do this, the Harvard researchers rely on the clues encoded within the light rays entering the camera. New cameras contain all kinds of new hardware, such as microlens arrays and absorbing masks that can record the direction of light. This allows you to focus a picture after the fact or change the perspective view. The Harvard team wanted to know if they could get some of that functionality with a regular camera without adding any extra hardware. The key, they found, is to infer the angle of the light at each pixel rather than directly measure it, which standard image sensors and film would not be able to do. Their solution was to take two images from the same camera position but focused at different depths. The slight differences between these two images provide enough information for a computer to create a brand new image as if the camera were moved to one side. By stitching these together into an animation, they provide a way for amateur photographers and microscopists to create an impression of a stereo image without the need for expensive hardware. The technique could be used to create 3D images of translucent materials, such as biological tissues. It also suggests an alternative way to create 3D movies for the big screen. The work was published in Optics Letters. Researchers at the University of Pittsburgh used light to reconfigure hydrogels and induce self-sustained motion. This biomimetic behavior in a non-living organism could have medical applications, including microfluidics and optics. The team demonstrated that the gels ran away when exposed to the light, exhibiting direct sustained motion. The team also factored in heat, combining the light and local variations in temperature to further control the motion or shape of the samples. For example, you could take a sheet of hydrogel and, with the appropriate use of light, fashion it into a lens-shaped object that could be used in optical applications. The team also demonstrated that you don't need to construct a new device for every application. The same gel can be reused for different purposes with different combinations of light. The team will now study the effect of embedding microscopic fibers into the gel to further control the shape and response of the material to other stimuli. The article appears online in Advanced Functional Materials. More than $4 million in federal, industry, and academic funding aims to advance freeform optics through a new center led by the Universities of Rochester and North Carolina. Although the production of freeform surfaces became possible just a few years ago, a broad range of applications has been identified, including mobile displays, LED lighting, remote sensing devices, and astronomical instrumentation. The Center for Freeform Optics brings the University of Rochester and University of North Carolina at Charlotte, together with nine industry partners so far, to advance freeform optics research as a basis for innovation. They also want to demonstrate state-of-the-art optical systems and prepare future optics workers. Director of the center is University of Rochester optical engineering professor Yannick Roland. A five-year grant that started on August 1st from the NSF Industry University Cooperative Research Centers Program is providing seed funding. NASA's car-sized Mars rover Curiosity marks one year on the Red Planet this week and has already achieved its main science goal of revealing ancient Mars could have supported life. After successfully landing in a Mars crater on August 5, 2012, Curiosity has provided more than 190 gigabits of data and fired more than 75,000 laser shots to investigate the composition of targets. It's also collected and analyzed sample material from two rocks and driven more than one mile. Curiosity's other major accomplishments this year include finding evidence of an ancient stream bed and helping NASA design missions safe for human explorers by experiencing radiation levels exceeding the space agency's career limit for astronauts. Unfortunately, Curiosity didn't find methane, which is produced by living creatures, so we won't have living company anytime soon. To follow the conversation online about Curiosity's first year on Mars, use hashtag one year on Mars or follow NASA and Mars Curiosity on Twitter. Or you can follow Sarcastic Rover on Twitter, which is always very entertaining. Well, that's it for this edition of Light Matters, the photonics industry's only weekly newscast. As always, you can write to us with your comments or questions at lightmatters at photonics.com. We leave you today with images from Curiosity's hazard avoidance camera that NASA has stitched together to show the rover's first 12 months in two minutes. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.
Thank you.